All right, everybody, welcome to the Barely Fun channel. Thank you again for hanging out with us this Friday. You can find us here every Friday on Twitch, streaming on our individual channels. I mean, not all of us are streaming, but most of us are streaming. As always, you can find us on YouTube if you go to bit.ly slash BFC YouTube. And you can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Barely Fun channel. Uh, we have the usual cast of characters with us tonight, or we, rather we had the usual cast of characters with us tonight <laughs> until one of us lost our internet access. So uh, Randy will be joining us hopefully shortly once his internet decides to come back, if it decides to come back at all. But oh, we kicked the router. Yeah, something happened. I don't know. <laughs> we had him in the call and then he dropped. Um, but as usual, there's the usual cast of characters. You can find myself over at twitch.tv slash Shine. I stream oh, focus. typically every Friday, and then I've got some weekend streams and sometimes some streams during the, the actual week as well. Uh, this morning, I actually did some streaming because I was playing the new Paper Mario game, but we can get into that a little bit later. Uh, to my, what's this, what's this, left or right? Uh, over there, this guy here on my side. Uh, other way. <laughs> well, on your screen, it's different. But um, <laughs> on my screen, to... The left over here, you we have Anthony over at Tauntaun Gaming. Hey, uh, you can find me over at uh, twitch.tv slash what's a Tauntaun. Um, I've been streaming uh, about three times a week now. Um, so you can catch me. I think it's like early morning back stateside, but it's it's late at night over here. I've uh, been playing lots of stuff. I've been playing <laughs> so Frostpunk stuff and things and, <laughs> and junk and whatever um and we can get into that <laughs> also joining us is our is our resident gamer score Enthusiast. genius genius jeremy over at jeremy x103 he might not stream that often but as you we can all see his current gamer score and I'll have him read it off since he wants to try to play Koi and just change his name to it. But you can see his current gamer score on the screen. <laughs> he's hiding. He's muted. Uh, I, I know, know he's muted. Uh, oh, there, there, there he is. Because yeah. I'm still playing, playing Frostpunk. But yeah, so I'm not going to go through the normal question of asking Jeremy what his gamer score is, because of course he's now at 282,218, slowly closing in on that 300k mark. Um, so we don't really have a whole lot going on in news for gaming this week. Randy's hanging out in the chat with us. Hopefully his internet oh, will decide we, to come back. We had some games come out this week. We did have some games come out. We can, we'll talk about that. I'm, but I'm, I'm more talking about the bigger industry stuff instead of releases, right? Um, sure. So we did have a few things that I think were actually interesting. Um, and one of the things we will talk about is one of the new game releases. But the big one that came out just uh, yesterday was that the Xbox One X and the Xbox One S Digital Edition are now being completely discontinued by Microsoft. Which, I, I'm curious what the decision there was, because to our understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, was that the infrastructure for Xbox was very much going to be uh, device agnostic, in a sense. Yeah, we're, uh, Microsoft's going to have their devices, but it was more about the platform than the actual devices. So to see them cancel out the last generation of devices, which cross-gen was going to be a normalcy for Xbox, is to see them cancel those out is strange. And I wonder if it's just a matter of due to the current situation that we're in when it comes to production, it just wasn't viable for them to make more one X's and the digital edition of the one S. That's, that's yeah, I think, I think it probably is like a money thing. Definitely. If COVID didn't happen, they wouldn't cease production yet. Yeah. Yeah. They're probably not able to meet demands. So they're just discontinuing 
to save their asses so that they don't uh yeah or at least they're 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 moving assets from making the uh 1x to the series x is more likely what's happening yeah that was that was kind of my my thought about it when i first read about it is they probably said okay we have limited resources for manufacturing right now we don't see the value in continuing to produce the 1x and the 1s digital so to make room for the series x and the possible series s that's rumored to be announced next month cut production of the older models just to get the newer models in stock in time makes me wonder if the series s is going to um is going to be maybe the one x price the series s yeah it ma it makes what it makes me think is that the series x is going to be the one x price and that the series s was going to be the current price of the uh one s digital that's what it makes me think because it, it, yeah, if, if i'd imagine there'd be a price drop yeah if, if, if the price I... range i mean if we take the msrp right the msrp for the one x is what 400 399 uh, and then i think the all digital one <laughs> s is like 250. so if that was the same price area of the series x and the series s it kind of makes sense at this point to take those two devices out of their lineups because price wise why would someone want to buy those if they're so similar in price i don't know it's an interesting move to say the least we we're so i think we're so accustomed to seeing support and production of consoles still keep going after the new gen of consoles is uh, on the market that it seems weird but with this situation that we're in it's just it's different mm -hmm. and i think it's a good move on their part we'll see what comes of it uh there's going to be a shortage of one x's it looks indefinitely so if you didn't have a one x by now good luck you ain't getting one <laughs> most likely it's just not going to happen well i mean there's i'm sure there's it's not like sold out <laughs> so I, I'm sure I cannot that. find a single retailer yeah. locally that has one. Most places have been sold out for a couple months mm -hmm. now, like consistently. Ah. They have like mm -hmm. warehouse back stock, so you'll may you'll maybe see like two to three restocks, but you're not seeing a holiday push. Yep. We're not going to have I a large restock. Right? Since I'm on a military base, and everyone probably already has a console. Yeah, here stateside, the the local retailers, the big local retailers have been empty on all consoles across the board. So it wasn't just a matter of like, oh, the Switch was, was uh, you know, low on stock or out of stock everywhere. It's every single console has been out of stock. PS4, wow. Xbox, and Switch stateside. That seems to be very common across the board mm -hmm. right now. <laughs> uh, on that topic, real quick, I did buy a new Switch finally today. Nice. So I got lucky. Uh, hit it up walmart.com at just the right time Very sure. where they had some on stock so I, I'm getting a new switch so that'll help solve my battery problem I'll be able to play longer in handheld mode finally again more than an hour um, it was one of those things I could have replaced the battery but I'm just like ah, I'd rather just buy a new switch at this point I mean yeah, basically, basically have one just... for upstairs one for downstairs blah 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 <laughs> Um, in other news, we did have some new game releases, the big one this week being Paper Mario. And the interesting thing that came out of that is apparently the Paper Mario devs came out and said after the release that they're not allowed to make new characters that touch on existing Mario characters. And that appar apparently is something that happens across the board, across all Mario franchise now. Wait, so they can't create new characters? They are allowed to create brand new characters but the existing characters in the Mario universe are not allowed to be changed or touched, redesigned, or anything. But isn't that what Paper Mario does? <laughs> Everything's redesigned? 
well, technically, the way the Paper Mario works is all the existing Paper Mario characters are still in that game. Mm-hmm. It's just that according to the story, evil origami versions have replaced them as like a duplicate. So oh, it's okay. not so actually it's not the same character. Exactly. It's not That's a redesign of the same around. character. It's a duplicate. So what's stopping them from <laughs> redesigning these characters? This is apparently a order that has come down from Nintendo that for the Don't foreseeable future the characters. that you cannot <laughs> make changes to characters at all. So no character redesigns. You can't use characters in ways that are not iconic representations of the characters you can't so weird so like for example uh in in super mario 3d world where you saw bowser with the cat suit that today would not be allowed Ah. they want the mario characters being represented as their base selves going forward so no mario warriors got it Yep. So <laughs> it, it, it's what it's going to do is it's going to put a damper on any type of innovation when it comes to Mario franchising. If yeah, someone most, gets yeah, handed the opportunity to make a new Mario game, they're shackled to what they can do with it. I feel like this will probably let up in a few years. They just have so many multimedia things happening in the next like five years that they're trying to keep it like brand constant. Like they've got the theme parks opening up. They've got toy sets coming out and whatnot. And the next like large, larger populated generation is now starting to grow up and be cognitive. So they want Mario to be recognizable again. Yeah. Consistent. It'll, it'll let up in about five to six, seven years. Once uh, everybody knows who the fuck Mario is again. Mm-hmm. Well, and the, 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 the origami King team, said that they were forced to create original characters with designs that didn't involve the Mario universe at all, which is why you see such a drastic deviation of the boss characters in the new Paper Mario game. Like, they've, they're have brand new boss characters that have never been seen in any other Mario game before because they were not allowed to do that. They were not allowed to say, yeah. take, you know, a blooper and turn it into an origami version of itself as a boss or something. They just weren't allowed to do it because that was considered a baddie already, and it's a baddie, and it's it's so strange. They do have similarity. Like, some of the bosses have similarities to existing characters, but it's not the exact same character. So they went ahead and just grabbed shit that's on their desk and made it a boss. <sighs> it, it explains a lot of the early game bosses that you see. It just not being creative because they probably were working there uh, trying to do everything they could to come up with bosses at the last minute for some of these early levels. I mean, so a lot of the ender, later game bosses, from what I've seen and watched, look good. The early game bosses are like, why, why, why is that boss? <laughs> so, I don't know. It's interesting that... Nintendo's kind of exerting that type of a pressure, but we'll see where it goes. It'll and like, well, it'll probably die off it a little bit. It's just a branding thing. They're just trying to rein in their branding a bit. Mm. Um, let's see what else came out this week. So, one that randomly came out that I didn't, I wasn't expecting to come out. I just started seeing like a lot of videos about it. Is that Ghosts of Tsushima? Mm, yeah. So that came out this week. That's another one. I actually didn't realize that it was releasing this week. I thought like another trailer dropped because it's been so long since we've heard anything uh, from the game or about the game. But yeah, apparently it's uh, yeah, we can't read all that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can't see the whole name. But anyway, uh, <laughs> Foldgate. Foldgate. <laughs> so <laughs> yes, Foldgate. So, I mean, it looks like a very interesting game. Um, it's about a samurai on an island being invaded by Mongols, I believe. Hmm. I might check it out. I haven't decided yet. <laughs> Ninja Zelda. <laughs> Ninja Zelda. But yeah. I'm just wondering if it uh, if it's any different from us, like Sekiro, that's another game similar to it. 
Um, that, it, it looks decidedly less uh, Souls born than uh, than Sekiro was. Sekiro was definitely a Souls game, and this one looks more like an action adventure. There's not like the whole bullshit make one mistake and you get rinsed mechanic. Yeah, mm. Randy says he's playing it, and he says the combat is tight. So <laughs> it's a shame he's not I, in the chat or in the room right now, so he could actually tell us what the hell the game's like. Yeah, I was I was thinking about playing it, but uh, haven't heard or haven't seen any gameplay. So yeah, you know maybe maybe Randy can do a video on it, show off the this f- combat system that's so tight. <laughs> He's saying his internet success, but anyways, um, but yeah, that we've had a pretty good few releases. There's some new releases coming up. I I'm playing Paper Mario. I decided to get a hold of it, and um, even after all, the even the after all the week. complaining about it, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I still got it. Um, it's not a bad game. So to go into detail on it, it it's not Thousand Year Door. It's not going to be Thousand Year Door. I don't think we're ever going to see another Thousand Year Door ever. I think cowards. I, I think Nintendo's just too afraid to do that in depth of an RPG again. They want their properties to be easily accessible. And so Paper Mario is a reflection of that. Yeah. To a T. To a T. It's a simple explore towns and areas and do simple things like rescuing toads and collecting coins and filling in holes with confetti so that you fill in all the holes in the area and there's tons of unlockables if you do all of the things in the areas and then the 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 battle system itself is is simple to a fault almost yeah it just goes to show just how uh influenced by the west and how big a market we are yep it's for nintendo that they would they would cater to uh the casual gamer out here as opposed to because that's always been a thing um whenever they would release any kind of rpg uh in japan they would water it down once they would yeah. release in the states because our gamers were just not as hardcore and into it and we're easily frustrated we're just like put down the game a lot quicker <laughs> than uh japanese gamers yeah and i think what we're seeing is we're seeing a re- uh, um a reflection of that happening, but Nintendo's just starting out from that dumbed down point. Yeah. Instead of making a, a, a region specific version where the Japanese version is the true version and the American version is the, the dumbed down right. version, right? <laughs> I think we're right, just right. seeing them going through and say, you know what? We want our games to be easily accessible for all ages and audiences. So therefore we're going to make a paper Mario game. That's basically like a very light puzzle platformer in a sense. Mm. And it's fun. It's quirky. It, it's got, it's got the light heartedness of a paper Mario. The aesthetic is there. It looks great. It plays well with what it has, but it's just lacking. It's lacking yeah. depth. Ironically, Paper Mario lacks depth, right? Um, yeah. So I'm I'm enjoying it, but it's definitely like every time I get into a fight, I'm just like, oh, isn't there a way I could just tell the game to do the fight for me? Because I don't want to do this part. I want to just do the exploring part. That's the fun, the the more fun part of the game right now. And I'm only like three yeah, hours I'm, in, but I'm hoping that they can take like. Uh... A lesson from like Pokemon where there's a depth to it that if you are more of a hardcore gamer you can get into it and like work with stats and get all that extra stuff instead of just having this very shallow kind of game with no depth to it. The problem is I think that's what Nintendo wants to sell though. That's yeah. that's exactly what Nintendo as a first party. Yeah, it's just it's just surprising their properties. That they that's can. what they want to sell. <laughs> they they can't make like a multi layered like oh well maybe we can cater to both like have difficulty settings. <laughs> I I just don't think they care. Forbid. <laughs> yeah. I think they know. I think they know, especially since their foray into the mobile gaming market. I think they fully understand that the casual market spends more. 
yeah. even though they're they're less frequent to buy a game because there's so many more of them they outdo yeah. us people that like actually play a lot of video games in sales i think they know that and that's what they, that's what they're going for well i mean uh, it's this is just the way that that uh the gaming industry is just moving towards yeah. over overall gaming's is, becoming uh, mainstream is the, is the, is yeah. the thing it's becoming a very yeah, mainstream activity different i like so gaming go before back to cool. pen and paper <laughs> but even even that is very uh, mainstream you can i can attest to like so many people uh are even into the like the tabletop gaming as well yeah like casual casual gamers that just you know i didn't even know that they were into gaming and then i see oh yeah we're having a board game night I'm like oh yeah you, know, you were like into that kind of stuff <laughs> But yeah, it's definitely the game's definitely worth checking out. But if I would suggest, I would flat out suggest if you're not already a fan of Paper Mario, try to find it on sale if you can. It's going to be oh, hard to find it on sale because yeah, it's a Nintendo, it's it's a Nintendo first party title. So the luckiest you're going to get is if like Amazon or or GameStop for some reason has just on, on deep discount or Best Buy is getting, trying to get rid of copies. But you're not going to get it digitally happen. on sale ever. Lowest you're going to see that for the next like six months is like maybe six to ten dollars off. Yep. It's just not going to happen. So if you're not a, a hardcore Paper Mario fan, I wouldn't buy it. It's not for The sad not part is, is, is with my experience of the series, I would consider myself a Paper Mario fan. And even as that, I am turned away from this game from what I've seen. And that is sad. It's basically Super Paper Mario, which was good, but with a half-cocked battle system because they realized, oh, we want an RPG, but we don't really want an RPG. Yep. Like I said, they like I said earlier, they created a problem that they then had to fix. Yeah. Well, it, yeah, the battle system is no longer an RPG-style bas- battle system. It's a complete, just active battle si- turn-based battle system. It's not. There's no RPG element to it. There's not like a large list of moves and characters to choose from i to my knowledge i don't even know if i can have more than one character on my team at this point so based on reviews there are partners in the game but they are story and region locked like once you reach a certain part of the story they join you and then they're in your battle and you don't control them they move on their own volition and then once you reach another story beat they leave your party that's yeah. So the, the in other words, yeah, it's not an RPG because you can't pick and choose your own party of characters. It's pointless. it's just a battle system, is all it is. It's and it pointless. slows the game down so damn much. Mm. Okay. Well, I, I mean, I I'm not gonna t- to lay judgment too harshly on it. I, it's it's enjoyable, but it's average at best. Um. But yeah, until next time, friends, I think that's going to wrap us up for this episode of the pre-game show podcast. For all of you that are watching us live, please stay tuned. We're going to pop into a few video games here. Um, as always, don't forget to check us out on all of our Twitch channels. Don't forget to check out the Facebook page and the Twitter. You can all find links for all of those in the description below. Until next time, friends, I hope you had fun because we sure as hell did. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. Uh... Thank you.